Hello students. In this video we're going to estimate the area under a curve given this function over this interval. And actually at the end of the video I'm going to compute that area exactly by taking a limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is set up a grid and our left endpoint approximation. So the formula for the left endpoint approximation uh, starts with an index of j equals 0 and then you sum until you get up to the number of rectangles minus 1. So this is going to be from the left endpoint and then you don't include the rightmost endpoint. So hence the j is 0 and um, you go to the second to last um, <clears throat> grid point. That's the left endpoint approximation. The f of x sub j times delta x, this is the area of each rectangle. And then the summation means just add up all the rectangles. Okay, And you'll notice that this is actually n rectangles. So for example, if n were 5, then you'd be going from 0 to 4. But if you count 0 to 4, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's actually 5 numbers. So that's 5 rectangles. Okay, So that's a brief explanation of that. Um, of that term. Now the grid points x sub j, you start at the left endpoint, which is minus 1 in this case. Um, so we start here at minus 1, and then you add a delta x for each j. So in other words, if you look at this picture here, we're starting at minus 1, and then we're adding delta the width of delta x to get to the next endpoint. But for the first endpoint, um, that is uh, j is 0, so the first um, grid point is x sub 0, or x naught in this case. Then to get to the next grid point, you add delta x, so that'll be minus 1 plus 1 times delta x, and that'll give us x sub 1. And then to get to the next grid point, you add two delta x's, because that's going to be 2 away. So it'll be minus 1 plus 2 times delta x equals x2. And then for 3, it'd be minus 3 plus 3 delta x, and so on. So j is counting the um, the number of rectangles or the number of grid points here and uh, n is the number of rectangles so if you keep that in mind then um, you realize that the um, grid points x sub j where j is the counter is equal to minus one plus how, how you're counting the width of the interval okay so keep in mind that j is a counter okay um, the width of the interval, of course, is going to be the width of, uh, sorry, the width of the rectangle is going to be the width of the interval, which is 2 minus and minus 1, which is going to give us a 3, divided by the number of rectangles. Okay, so I'm going to um, simplify that. So the delta x is 3 over n, because 2 minus minus 1 is 3 over n. And then I'll take that delta x is 3 over n, and I'll substitute it in for this delta x, and I'll get minus 1 plus j times 3 over n. So now I have the x sub j and I have the delta x and I'm going to fill that in to this um, term here. Okay, so let's take these three terms and let's put them all in there. Now the um, uh, summation symbol this is just going to come along for the ride. Um, I'll take the um, x sub j and I'll substitute it into the function. The function is 4x minus 1. So I'll take the x sub j and I'll substitute that into the 4 times the point x sub j which is given by this formula minus 1. I'll multiply that quantity by delta x. So this is f of x here and this is delta x here. Then I will distribute the 4. 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. 4 times 3 j over n. 4 times 3 is 12 j over n. And then the minus 1 just comes down. Then I'll simplify. Minus 4 and minus 1 gives us a minus 5 plus 12j over n. Now what I did here was the 3 over n is a constant. It doesn't have a j. So this 3 over n will appear in every one of these summation terms. So I'm just going to factor it out using the distributive property. Because remember the j does the counting and there's no j term here. So it comes out. And then this is the simplification. Next, 
um, I will take the sum and I'll use um, the summation's linearity. That's just a fancy way of saying I can just sum up the minus fives and I can just sum up these 12 n, 12 over n j's. That's all. So um, I'll just do that. So I have 3 over n times and then I'll take the sum of the minus fives, that's this term here, and then I'll take 3 over n times the sum of all these terms over here. Now, there are n of these, remember, I talked about that at the beginning of the video. If you just count from j equals 0, if you start counting from 0 and you go all the way up to n minus 1, you're going to get up to n. Okay, because you're going to start at 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way until you get to n minus 1, and because you're indexing from 0, um, that gives you an extra one, so that gives you the n. All right, now, um, um, so that means I have minus 5 n times, I'm adding up n minus 5 terms, so that's minus 5 times n. In this case, um, I'm going to, uh, once again, I'm going to use the same principle of, uh, that I used um, earlier when I factored out the 3 over n. I'm going to factor out a 12 over n, and um, I'll end up with this sum here. Now, the n's cancel here, so 3 times minus 5 is minus 15. 3 times 12 is 36, n times n is n squared. Now this term here, this is a power sum. There's a formula for this, and that formula is n squared over 2 minus n over 2. Um, usually that'll, uh, they'll put that in your uh, calculus text, so you can probably look that up. Look for the power sums formula in your area under the curve section. Um, all right, now that I have that, um, I'm going to distribute the 36 over n squared into this um, difference. So 36 over n squared times n squared um, over 2. Well, you'll notice that the n squareds are going to um, cancel. I'm going to put them on top of one another. And 36 over n squared minus n over 2. Um, I'll have an n over n squared term and a 36 over 2 here. Now the n squareds will cancel out, so that'll leave me with 36 over 2, which is 18. The um, n over n squared will leave us with an n in the denominator, and 36 divided by 2 is 18. So I'm left with minus 15 plus 18 minus 18 over n. Okay. Next, um, that simplifies. 18 minus 15 is 3. I have a minus 18 over n, and this is the left endpoint approximation in terms of n. So if n were 10, then this would be 18 divided by 10, which is 1.8, so it would be 3 minus 1.8, and that would be um, 1.2. So the left endpoint approximation would give us 1.2, and so on and so forth. Now, if you want to get the exact area under the curve, we have to increase the number of rectangles. But notice that as we increase the number of rectangles, the delta x's actually get smaller. So as n goes to infinity, this delta x is actually going towards 0. So uh, we won't get an infinite uh, number here. Now, you'll see how that works out um, here. So the area under the curve is uh, given by the um, limit as n goes to infinity. So here, this, this limit just means we're increasing the number of rectangles to infinity. And um, now that if I evaluate this limit, ln is 3 minus 18 over n. I'll substitute that in over here. Now, um, the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 is simply going to be 3. And the limit... Um, as n goes to infinity of 18 over n is going to be 0, and um, that leaves us with an area under the curve of 3. All right. Um, well, I hope that was helpful. Good luck.